I'm gonna talk about my thoughts on what I feel about the camera you know I'm not gonna talk about specs if you want specs go check out my, my man you know Tony Northrump you know Chelsea you know they they do those that spec stuff so they good with that I let them do that I'm very very proud of Sony and what they're doing they're pushing the envelope high you know they're pushing the envelope of innovation and that's what we need is pushing all these other companies like Canon and Nikon to kind of start like you know start lowering their you know their their prices a little you know what I mean let's do 61 megapixels in this and in, in this companies but like oh 61 okay let's do 100 megapixels you saw Netflix killed Blockbuster because Blockbuster didn't want to you know innovate they just wanted to be a brick and mortar they just wanted to so this is the most weather sealed camera they have to date which is a very huge statement to make you know let's go on the Eiffel Tower or Empire State Building and just you know clear the street and drop these cameras just so you can prove like okay this is gonna last longer that's crazy that that's that's one of the biggest ones you know the eye focusing thing because most cameras just focus on the face but now you're gonna be focusing on the eye which is you know it's crazy that's that's one big step for mankind you know I only do video so most of what I'm gonna be saying will be towards video we'll be addressing the video aspect of this camera and um, my thoughts on it so let's go Stop. How's that? Uh, it was all right. <laughs> Why the hell are they going to release A7R4 and just forget about the A7S? You know, because they already have the A7R3 um, and uh, the A7S line, which is supposedly the video line, um, which is credited more to the videographers like me and you guys. It's kind of like, you know, it's being left behind and, uh, you know, I mean, Sony, I'm not going to be surprised if next week they announce, you know, um, the release of the A7S 3 or 4 or 5 or whatever they're going to release. Because, you know, Sony is kind of like, you know, there was that time when they were kind of like jumping in numbers and versions like, okay, we're going to release the A6300 and just jump the a6100 yeah, like three, three years later release the you know 6400 so they kind of like skipping in numbers now they announced the a7r mark 4 so like so i don't you know i'm i'm not going to be surprised if they announce the a7s 3 or a7s 5 and then come back to like a7s 3 later on or maybe they might even announce the A7S something else, A7S something, you know. So I'm just looking forward to the video line of uh, the Sony's because I have the A7S 2 and I have the A7S um, 1. But, you know, I was looking forward to the A7S Mark 3. So that's the one I've been waiting for. So the A7S Mark 3 is the one I've been waiting for. So... I don't know what's going on with Sony because um, the, A the A7R is already on 3 and the A7S is still on 2. And then they're going to release the A7S, you know, the A7R for now. So, you know, I mean, I don't mind because they were doing that with the A6000 version where they were like upgrading that camera and then not even upgrading on the you know S line for a bit because there's only two versions of the S line so the one and the two you know and those are badass cameras so um, that's where I kind of like shifted to Sony like fully when they came out with the a7s one that's when I was like you know low light beast I'm done I'm just you know going to Sony so for video I mainly just use Sony and then if I'm doing some photos I use Canon um, because uh, I had a lot of Canon glass before I got to um, Sony so it just made sense for me and at the time there was like not a lot of glass for you know Sony and uh, the glass for Canon you can find it secondhand cheaper and there's a lot of glass for so for um, Canon 
so you know that's why I'm still um, holding on to my Canon but um video I'm full-time on Sony now so I've been waiting for the a7s mark 3 or whatever a7s version they're gonna come out with so um the fact that the a7r mark 4 has all these uh, all these you know all these upgrades on the video quality um, I'm thinking the next camera that uh, the cat the a7s the new a7s is definitely going to have most of these features that this camera has and the price point i feel like it's been just like everybody's saying you know they've priced it way too low for the upgrades they've made to this camera and um you know i hope sony is not trying to play the chip game you know like you know we're gonna win because we're the cheapest kind of thing because all these other you know uh companies like canon and nikon you know fuji and st stuff like that they all price their cameras like higher especially if like for the features that this camera has the a7r mark 4 for all these new features it has you know like canon would have freaking would have been like okay this camera is gonna be like seven thousand dollars but Sony just comes and says it's just gonna be you know just like the other you know um, the full frame lines it's gonna be around the 3500 mark so that's really that's really hard to beat I don't know what Sony's trying to do but you know that's you know it's like it's getting a lot of people in the game you know a lot of people that were not able I mean it's good for filmmakers and for photographers it's good for filmmakers being that they can now start kind of getting the same quality as the big companies you know as the, the companies that use those 8k cameras if Sony comes up and says okay the a7s mark 3 is gonna have a 5k uh, it's gonna be 5k or it's gonna be you know 6k or something like that I don't know how they're gonna achieve that but if they come and they do something like that and then they price it around the 4,000 mark that's still you know that's still too good for the for the quality so it's gonna give all these other companies a run for their money so I don't know what Sony's trying to do but I'm just happy that they're not trying to they're not charging an arm and a leg for their products and um well, we're going to see the future, but, you know, hopefully they keep pricing their cameras at this kind of price point where it's affordable to a lot of people, to a lot of professionals. It's very affordable, you know, so that's very, that's a good price. That's, to me, that's kind of good. And um, that's also kind of bad, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, if you want to get a way expensive camera and be like, oh, I got a red and there's always the Alexis and stuff. You can go there, but Sony, uh, but cameras like the Sony A7R4 and then the A7S2, these are all like good cameras that you can actually shoot a full, you know, a full feature film with. So you can definitely shoot a movie with these Sony cameras, with these new, uh, with these Canon cameras, you know, these full frames. Because there's a lot of movies out there that have actually shot, you know. Um, big movies, big screen movies with these uh, mirrorless cameras and these DSLR cameras. So that's a good thing that Sony is doing because it's pushing all these other companies like Canon and Nikon to kind of start like, you know, start lowering their, you know, their their prices a little. You know what I mean? On the, We're going to see how much the next, um, uh, how much the, the new cameras are going to be, but I'm sure they're not going to be in the five, six thousand dollars when Canon drops because they know that if we price our if we price our products this high you know Sony is gonna is gonna take all the you know it's gonna take most of the market share which is actually doing now like they just came out of nowhere with the a6000 and then like everybody started switching and you know so it's it's that this is actually what Sony is doing I feel like it's good for everybody because what Sony is doing pushes 
everybody else in the industry to innovate you know it pushes them to be like okay so sony has this let's try and up sony and you know get this kind of uh get this this customers and then sony was like all right so what are we going to do now okay let's do 61 megapixels and this and, and this company's like ah oh, 61 okay let's do 100 megapixels you know so there's already a camera out here but so i'm saying like you know what Sony is doing is good for the whole industry, for filmmaking, for photography, because they're pushing the envelope high. You know, they're pushing the envelope of innovation, and that's what we need. That's what we need as a people. We need to, you know, advance and, you know, innovate. Same thing what Elon Musk is doing. Like, Elon Musk is like, you know, that's my man right there because, like, he's pushing all these other companies that we're not even thinking about, you know, electric cars to kind of start getting into the whole electric car game and this and that, you know, innovating and making the world better. So innovation is good for the industry. You know, it's good for um, people in the game everywhere. So it's good everywhere, you know, because if if you are not progressing, then you're, you're dying. If you're not progressing, you're dying. You can't if you can't just stay on the same path on a flat line you need to be you know going up you need to be making a hockey stick but if you're not doing that any in industry that's not uh, you know doing the hockey thing the hockey stick thing you know is gonna die so that's what blockbuster that's how Netflix killed blockbuster because blockbuster didn't want to you know innovate they just wanted to be a brick and mortar they just wanted to be okay physical store they didn't want to start transitioning slowly to internet which netflix came and netflix also offered you know they probably wanted to be bought out by blockbuster and so that way blockbuster can kind of like continue can um add another uh you know internet way of people can like you know how people can like rent movies and stuff like that but blockbuster was like you know netflix you and stuff like that but anyways what sony is doing is good for the industry i just called them cheaper earlier but after like overlooking the whole after looking at the whole picture i feel like what they're doing is good because it's making everybody from canon to nikon you know to panasonic you know all, all these other companies it's making all of them start thinking bigger start like innovating start thinking of ways to push this film industry push this photography industry so um what sony is doing is actually good and uh i'm very very proud of sony and what they're doing so let's talk about this a7 um r4 so the physicals of this camera you know the grip is bigger the they've changed a few things on the you know the analog things are like a little bit further from from each other which is good for people with like big thumbs people like you know I'm going to talk about my thoughts on what I feel about the camera. You know, I'm not going to talk about specs. If you want specs, go check out my, my man, you know, Tony Northrump, you know, Chelsea. You know, they, they do those that spec stuff. So they're good with that. I let them do that. I don't want to, you know, get into the specs. I could do that, but there's no point. You know, there's a lot of videos out there. If, if, if you actually want the spec specs, you can just go on the Sony website. And then another thing is um, on the physicals is uh so sony said um let me quote what this guy said from sony what did he say he said this is the most durable most weather resisting alpha camera um we have to date so that's what he said so this is the most weather sealed camera they have to date which is a very huge statement to make you know if this is a fact then damn sony really so you're telling me the A7S II, the A7R3, the A7S, I'm sorry, the A7A, you know, R3, they're all like, you know, not that weather sealed as this camera. Damn, that's a big statement to make, Sony. That's a very big statement. But like these companies, they need to start doing what most of these YouTubers do, where put these um, cameras through all these like whether you know tests and just go like to the Eiffel Tower and drop the drop the camera drop the a7r3 and drop the a7s2 and drop 
this new A7R4. Just go on the Eiffel Tower or Empire State Building and just, you know, clear the street and drop these cameras just so you can prove like, okay, this is going to last longer. Just throw them in the water and next day take them out and let's see which one works. You know, put it on the road and run, run over there with like a caterpillar truck. You know, just put it through that weather, you know, testing since you're saying this and that. Anyways, I'm just, you know, I'm just exaggerating, but you get the point. Like, you know, tell us and show us, you know what I mean? Show and prove. Me being a video guy, I'm going to wait for the A7S. And if it's this weather sealed, man, my, my credit card, man, I'm going to give him my credit card faster than uh, uh, Max Verstappen goes around. It. LCD display, any changes? Uh, it's still the same, you know, the same Sony flip whatever tilting thing and uh it's just like the other one where you can you know it touch that's one thing i like about it is you can you know um focus with just like touch you can focus you can press and um you can press on what you want to focus on so that's what's good about the display the lcd display it's a touch screen so you can kind of like press on what you want to focus on you know so that's pretty good right there you know that's pretty good sony that's sweet that's really sweet and um when it comes to like the image quality 61 megapixels it just means you know more resolution and uh you know talking about like billboard kind of prints and stuff like that if you want to like blow up your pictures but i'm more into video so um it's good for it's good for the fact that let's say if you want to fake camera movement you can kind of like zoom in and then like you know it's good for camera movement so i'm gonna kind of i'm kind of going to show you what i mean and also it's 4k so you know so that's another good thing you can fake the camera movement you can zoom the the video in a little bit and then like fake camera movement so for weddings that's pretty good i can do that all day i love that about this camera the 61 megapixels and uh that means that the you know the image quality is going to be is really it's going to be high so that's good that it's about that and the best thing about this camera the most thing that i'm looking forward to is the iaf that like you know like uh it's a big step up for cameras and the a9 had that as well and they say that the updated the firmware for the a7r3 to have this IAF but it's the first time in video for continuous eye focus which is a big step up with Sony again Sony I'm very proud of you for this innovation you know uh, for this upgrade Sony I'm very very proud of you guys that's crazy that that's that's one of the biggest ones you know the eye focusing thing because most cameras just focus on the face but now they're gonna be focusing on the eye which is you know it's crazy that's that's one big step for mankind you know that's one leap for mankind right there so 4k internal shooting I usually don't shoot in 4k the only thing that I use that I shoot in 4k is the drone um, the drone is the only thing that I use I shoot 4k in because um, I just like shooting the drone in 4k everything else my Sony a7s2 I don't even do 4k in that because the files are so large so I don't like dealing with those large files you know I do 1080p and um, yeah so that's what I do and also another thing I don't shoot in 4k is because like you know like your clients don't even probably have LCDs that you know display 4k they don't have computers that play 4k you know so and most of them don't even know what 4k is so i don't know why people go crazy about the 4k thing i mean it's good you know you can like the quality is high and everything but um uh 1080p is still is, is still good you know and uh, a lot of people <coughs> a lot of people give so much credit to their clients like don't give your clients too much credit guys because like these people that are booking you guys for weddings they don't know anything about you know 4k they don't know anything about dynamic range they don't know anything about you know 
uh, 61 megapixels. They don't know nothing about that. But some, um, you know, some filmmakers, they be like, you know, I'm not going to shoot a wedding until I get a 4K camera. I'm not going to shoot a wedding until I have, um, you know, until I get a red camera. Like, dude, your clients don't even know what ISO is. They don't even know what shutter speed is, you know, and you are over here talking about, oh, 4K, 4K. Like, dude, the files are huge when you're shooting 4K. And when it comes to weddings, most of my weddings are like um, seven hours, eight hours. Just imagine if I'm shooting 4K throughout the whole thing, like the, it's gonna be like two terabytes, two terabytes of freaking, you know, memory, like, it's crazy. So that's just way too much. And I have weddings like every other weekend or every weekend. Just imagine like the hard drive space that you need for, for these kind of files. So what you would need is, you know, you're going to need a lot of hard drives and, uh, uh, you know, big memory cards. Uh, so 4K is good, but it's good for short, for short shoots like commercials and, you know, for, for just like B-roll, just like, like small shoots, you know, music video. Yeah, I think 4K is good, but for a wedding, it's, a wedding is just too long of an event for you to just shoot 4K because of the image size, the, the sizes of the files are just huge. So all you people that are like, oh yeah, 4K, 4K, it doesn't matter to me, man, because clients, man, they don't know anything about 4K because... You saying that because you are a filmmaker. Same thing like when you're watching a film, you're focusing about, oh, you know what? They use the gimbal for this shot. They use the slider. Oh, look, um, this is a, this is probably like a, a 1.2 lens right here. Oh, look at the bokeh in this. But the rest of the people are just like enjoying the movie, you know. So being a filmmaker kind of uh, messes it up for you when you're watching a movie. So same thing with you, a filmmaker. So when you are kind of like <clears throat> thinking about your business, you're like, oh, I need a 4K camera. I need this and that, blah, blah, for weddings. But what you don't know is brides and grooms, most of them, like they don't even do, they don't do film. They do other professions. They're in other professions. That's why they're booking you. So don't obsess too much about the technical side. Just like get a camera that you can, that's going to produce good quality work and just do that. Stop obsessing about the tech, the, the specs and all that stuff.